Now that you know what covalent bonds are, how they relate to ionic bonds and metallic bonds, and then a little bit about multiple bonds and how strong they are, now we're going to name these different formulas, just like we were naming ionic bonds. Okay? But they are not named the exact same, because then we wouldn't be able to tell them apart. So now we're going to name a binary molecular compound, which means, of course, that we're going to have two things, binary. So that means we're going to have a binary molecular, meaning two, and it has to be a molecule. So I'm going to have two things, and it has to be a covalent bond. So here we're looking at two nonmetals again. And if I want to name one of these, it's really easy. You just take the first element, the entire name, you take the second element, and you add the IDE on the end, just like we're doing for ionic, so so far it's just like ionic. Okay, but the difference is that for both of these, okay, you add a prefix based on the number of atoms that are present. And we have to do this because in an ionic bond, one of them is always at the same charge, at least. So if I have a transition metal where its charge changes, the nonmetal is always the same charge. Well, here, we're not talking about losing or gaining electrons. We're talking about sharing. And the number that are shared can be widely different. Okay? So you've got to figure out now how many there are. And we had a prefix based on how many there are because that's going to change. I can have CO2. I can have C2O2. I can have CO4. Okay, there are many different options, whereas before, we had to have NaCl. There's no other way we can put Na and Cl together. Here in a molecular compound, there's many ways you can put the two together. Well, the exception here that you've got to watch out for, okay, are a couple of things. You never put mono in front of a first element. And we'll look at that mono here in a second. And if you have two consecutive vowels, one will get dropped. You don't want to put monoxide, like M-O-N-O-O-X-I-D. That just looks weird. So they drop one of them. And it'll just be monoxide, or you get rid of this first O. Okay. Well, these prefixes that we're talking about here are in the chart that you have to your right. One is mono, two is di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, and so forth. All of these prefixes are on the back of your periodic table. Okay, so where we used to have that common polyatomic ion chart is the only thing we knew on the back. Now there should be a little chart below it that has the mono, di, tri. So you don't have to memorize these. You just got to remember to flip over your table. So let's try to name a couple. All right, if I have CO2, so we take our first, name, our first element's name, put carbon, then we got to look at the next element. Well, it's oxygen, so I'm going oxide. But now I care about how many oxygens I have. Well, I've got two. Two is di, so you put dioxide, carbon dioxide. That one should be easy for everybody. You should know what that one is. Now I change this next one, so it says S2O2. So here is where I would put disulfur. Same thing as oxygen is two, dioxide. But notice here how I've got the di, and I don't have a mono here in front of carbon, even though it's one. It's just one of those conventions. You never put a mono in front. So let's try NF3. N is nitrogen. F is fluorine, there's three of them. So I put trifluoride. And look at the last one. I've got a carbon, and there's one of them, but it's first, so I don't put mono. And I'll put carbon. Four, chlorine, so I go tetra, chloride. And those are really that easy to name. You look at how many there are, you look at what they are. Okay, now we're going to look at how we name acids. Okay, when we name an acid, first you got to know what an acid is. Okay. And sometimes when different compounds mix with water, they make an acidic solution. And what they do is they will produce 
hydrogen and a solution. And they're things that are going to have an H first. It has an H first, it's very likely that it is an acid. And the ones that I give you that have an H first will always be an acid, other than water. Okay, well, H2O is not an acid. So we're going to have H something. Okay, there are two types of acids, and they are binary, where one's going to have two elements, or you're going to have an oxy acid. An oxy acid is just what it sounds like, it's something with oxygen. So let's take a look at our first type, which is binary. And there are actually two kind of types of binary, but there is one that is way more common than the other. Okay, the first kind of binary acid is one that is just hydrogen and an element. And how you name those is you put hydro, then you go whatever the root name of the element is, then you go ic, and you write acid. So for example, if I have HCl, that's hydrogen and an element. So what I'm going to be hydro. Well, it's chlorine, because it's Cl, so I do chlor. And then I put ic, hydrochloric, and then we write acid. Now I saw the H is first. That usually means it's an acid. Okay. Well, if we can have hydrogen in an element, we can also have hydrogen in a polyatomic. But these are ones that are going to be the polyatomics without oxygen. Okay, So these are not nearly as common. You name these the same. You put hydro, the root of whatever the polyatomic ion is, you put ic, and you add acid. And I'll give you here one of the only examples. You can have HCN. There's no oxygen there, so it's not an oxy acid, but it's also not just a single element, so it kind of gets pushed in this binary acid part. So we would call that hydrocyanic acid. The psi here is because this is cyanide. So that cyanide gets changed to just the CYAN, that's the root, and then we add ic acid. Okay, now we're going to name what's called an oxy acid. These are all acids that contain oxygen. Okay, and they're going to usually be a polyatomic ion. Well, the first thing you got to do when you name these is identify the oxy anion, meaning which polyatomic is it? Then, okay, when you found out which one it is, if it ends in A-T-E, it gets changed to ic acid. If that particular oxyanion ends in I-T-E, it gets changed to us acid. Okay, So if you have, for example, HNO3 and HNO2, okay, NO3 is nitrate. So it gets changed from nitrate to nitric. You go nitric acid. Notice how there's no hydro here. Hydro is just for binary acids. Well, NO2 is nitrite. So this gets changed to nitrous acid. Again, notice how there's no hydro. Hydros are only for binary acids. So let's take a look at a few examples. Okay, I've got HI. So does this have oxygen? No, not an oxyanion. It's a binary acid. There's one H, or just H in general, and one type of element, I. So I do hydro. The I is iodine. So we do the beginning or the root of iodine, which is IOD. We add the IC on the end, and we put acid, hydroiodic acid, HI. I'm going to let HClO2. Okay, and while this is an oxyanion, there's not just one element, there's oxygen in another. So I find this polyatomic. Well, this polyatomic is ClO2, which is chlorite. And what did I just say a minute ago about ites? Ites get turned to uses. So we go chlorous acid. No hydro. 
Okay, now I see H2S. Now I've got H and one type of element, even though there's more H's, doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the hydro. S is sulfur, so I go with sulf. Okay, and actually sulfur gets the, its whole name, just makes it sound better. And then you add ic acid, hydrosulfuric acid. Now if you were to put hydrosulfic acid, that's okay, I wouldn't count you wrong. We're learning right now. It's the where the root names get cut off. Okay, HClO3. Well, this is not a binary acid. It has oxygen. It's polyatomic. ClO3 is chlorate. So we go chloric acid. X are from 8. Now here we see we have H2SO4. SO4 is polyatomic. It has oxygen. It's sulfate. Eights are X, so we go sulfuric. Acid. Notice how we have hydrosulfuric and sulfuric. Two different things. H2S, H2SO4. They're different compounds. They're named differently. Okay, so so far we've just looked at writing the names for things. But then you're going to be able to go the opposite direction. So if I want to write a formula for my name, okay, you've got to remember that if I look at a covalent bond, okay, I'm looking at a prefix. So if they give me something with prefixes, I mean, notice that it's a non-metal and a non-metal, okay? We're looking at a covalent bond, and I just write whatever they give me. So if they say something like um, tri-nitrogen dichloride, we'll notice that's two nonmetals and it has the prefixes, so it has to be a covalent bond. So I would just go N2 Cl, sorry, N3 Cl2. Now, if they instead give me a metal and a nonmetal, so I can get an ionic bond, okay? So they're going to give me something like silver chloride, right? I don't have to look at the charges. Here, there's no charges. They tell me the number. Here, I'm going to have to look at what charges things are. Okay. I'm going to figure that out. Chlorine's a minus. That means silver is always a one plus. Silver's in, silver's in the transition metals, but it's actually always a one plus. Okay, it would be AgCl. And then, of course, if we have something that is two nonmetals, but has an H something, we're looking at an acid. So hydrofluoric acid then would be HF. Hydro telling me that it's one H, or just an H and an element. And then when I write these, I do have to be careful and check the charges. Fluorine is always a minus, H is always a plus, and it's HF. No, well, these are covalently bonded. Okay, we're looking at two nonmetals. Hydrogen sometimes likes to act like it's actually a metal. So H does always have a charge of plus, so you do have to check your charges on acids. So be very careful with that one. Charges here as well. So let's go ahead and write these formulas. If I have chlorine trifluoride. Looking at two nonmetals, got a covalent bond. I just write what it is. Cl because there's one trifluoride F3, ClF3. Diphosphorus trioxide again, covalent bond. P Di is 2, tri is going to be 3, oxide is O. Okay. And I've got carbonic acid. But I remember that X once came from an 8, so I look at carbonate. Carbonate is Cl3, has a 2 minus charge. I know it's an acid, so it's going to be crossed with hydrogen. So I'm going to go H plus Cl3, 2 minus. So I've got to balance these charges out. To be H2CO3. But the last one, which is sulfurous acid. So us's were once ites. So I look for sulfite, which is SO3 2 minus. Okay, it's an acid, so it's crossed with hydrogen. It's H SO3. H is always a plus. 
We look at these two, we get our charges correct, we go H2SO3. So you do have to watch your charges when you're looking at acids, like I just mentioned a minute ago. All right, last one. Define a binary molecular compound. Well, we're going to have two of something. Okay, it's molecular, so it's nonmetals. And they're bonded together. A binary acid and an oxy acid. What is the difference? Well, a binary is going to be an H plus one element or one type of element, not necessarily just one. I have two O's or two CL's. And if I have an oxy acid, it means I have H plus a polyatomic with oxygen. And if we're going to go and name a binary molecular compound, remember we have to look at the number you have. Okay, and we add a prefix based on that number plus the name, okay, for the first element. Then we're going to have to add a prefix plus the root plus IDE. So prefix plus the first name, and then a prefix plus the root name, an IDE. So that IDE part is the same as um, ionic bonds.